Are hundos actually important? Obviously, from a collection standpoint, they are. As was once famously sung, I want to be the very best, and it is clear that a mere 98 shiny Grudon is not the best. But practically, in a battle or raid context, how much better are hundos than non-hundos, actually? How much am I leaving on the table by maxing out my 98 shiny Grudon, rather than waiting for a hundo? Are zundos actually terrible? How terrible? As Mark Twain once quoted, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and statistics. Pokemon Go is full of misleading stats, but one of the most egregious is IVs. One of the most famous ways of lying with statistics is cutting off the bottom range of an axis. In this example, the truncated y-axis appears to show that the graph varies wildly over time. But if we rescale to show the entire range of the y-axis, all the way from zero, then we see that the variation in the data is not so extreme. Pokemon Go's presentation of Pokemon stats does something similar. By only showing you IVs and not Pokemon base stats, the appraisal screen exaggerates the effect of IVs and makes you believe that if a Pokemon doesn't have high IVs, then it is trash and worthless. But if we rescale this graph to include base stats, we see that IVs make up only a tiny portion of a Pokemon's total stats compared to the Pokemon species base stats. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We need some more context. In this video, I will explain what stats in Pokemon Go actually do, show you the precise difference that IVs make, and analyze the difference between hundos and so-called trash. At the end, I'll also explain how exactly CP is calculated and why it's dumb. In Pokemon Go, every Pokemon has three stats, attack, defense, and stamina. A higher attack stat leads to higher attack damage, a higher defense stat leads to lower damage taken, a higher stamina leads to more HP. The exact stats of a Pokemon are determined by three things, the Pokemon's species, its IVs, or individual values, and its level. The Pokemon species determines the base stats, which are not directly shown in the game, but can be found on sites like this one. For example, Dragonite has base stats of 263 attack, 198 defense, and 209 stamina. Blissey, by contrast, has base stats of 129 attack, 169 defense, and 496 stamina. From their base stats, we can already see that Dragonite is naturally a better attacker than Blissey, with a much higher 263 attack stat compared to Blissey's 129. On the other hand, Blissey naturally has much more health, with a much higher 496 stamina stat compared to Dragonite's 209. On top of the species-based stats, each Pokemon has IVs, or individual values, for each stat. These are the values you see when appraising a Pokemon in the game, and range from 0 to 15 for each stat. The game doesn't show you the actual number, but you can determine it based on the length of the colored-in portion of the bar. In total, there are up to 45 possible stat points added by IVs, so each increment on an IV contributes 1 over 45, or about 2%, to the total IVs. This is why a Pokemon that is missing exactly one IV point, but is otherwise a hundo, is called a 98%. One that is missing two is called a 96%. One that is missing three is called a 94%, and so on. The community calls Pokemon with maxed out IVs, hundos, and calls Pokemon with zero IVs, zundos. The value of its IVs are added to a Pokemon's base stats to give its total stats. For example, a hundo Dragonite with base stats of 263 attack 198 defense and 209 stamina would have total stats of 263 plus 15 attack, 198 plus 15 defense, and 209 plus 15 stamina. Or 278 attack, 213 defense, and 224 stamina. As you can see, and as I mentioned in the intro, the impact of the IVs is relatively minor compared to the base stats. For Dragonite's attack stat, the difference between a Zundo and a Hundo is only about 5.7%. Not nothing, but not the massive difference you might expect from looking at its appraisal screen. The difference between a Dragonite with 14 attack and one with 15 attack is only 0.36%. To get the effective stats for a Pokemon, the total stats are then scaled according to the Pokemon's level. Pokemon levels are not shown in the game directly, but they can vary from 1 to 50-ish. Each time you power up a Pokemon, its level increases by a half level, 
So powering up this level 1 Sandy Cast one time results in a level of 1.5, leveling it up two times results in a level of 2, and so on. What the game does show you, using the arc at the top of the Pokemon screen, is the Pokemon's CPM, or CP multiplier, which increases with each level. The CPM corresponding to each level is listed in this table. As the Pokemon's level increases, its CPM goes from 0.094 at level 1, all the way up to 0.84 at level 50. At low levels, the CPM increases quite quickly, and at high levels, it increases much more slowly. In fact, CPM starts to increase so slowly that from level 40 to 50, a Pokemon's CPM only increases from 0.79 to 0.84, an improvement of only 6.3%. Compare this to level 20 to 30, where the CPM increases from 0.60 to 0.73, an improvement of 21.7%. Considering the difficulty of acquiring Candy XL, which are required to power up from level 40 to 50, the improvement is extremely hard fought for its relatively small benefit. How does the CPM affect the stats? The Pokémon's stats, including its base stats and IVs, are multiplied by its CPM to find its effective stats. For example, at level 40, the CPM is 0.7903, so a level 40 Hundo Dragonite would have an effective attack stat of 263 plus 15 times 0.7903 which is about 219.7. The other stats are scaled in the same way. So, now we have stats, but what do these stats actually do? When Pokemon A attacks Pokemon B, the amount of damage inflicted is affected by A's attack stat, B's defense stat, as well as the move power and several multipliers, according to the attack damage formula shown here. There are four possible multipliers that modify attack damage. These aren't the point of this video, but I'll mention them quickly anyway. There is the same type attack bonus, or stab, of 1.2x, which applies if the move has the same type as the attacker, a weather bonus of 1.2x that applies if the move type matches the weather, a friendship attack bonus of varying amounts that applies when raiding with friends, and finally, a type effectiveness bonus that applies when using a not very effective or super effective attack, based on the types of the attack and the defender. Let's do an example attack damage calculation for a level 50 Hundo Dragonite attacking a level 40 Hundo Blissey with its best attack, Draco Meteor. The level 50 Hundo Dragonite has effective attack stat of 263 plus 15 times its CPM of 0.84, which is 233.6. The level 40 Hundo Blissey has effective defense stat of 169 plus 15 times its CPM of 0.79, which is 145.4. Move power is the number displayed beside a move on the Pokemon screen, and may have different values for raids and trainer battles, such as in this case of Dragon Tail. Draco Meteor has a power of 150, and since Draco Meteor is Dragon type, the same as Dragonite, the same type attack bonus applies, giving us a multiplier of 1.2x. Plugging these numbers into the attack damage formula, we get a damage of 145. This is the actual amount of HP that is removed from the Blissey when this attack hits it. To get a sense of the impact of stats, let's have a look at how this attack varies in damage with different levels and IVs. Keeping the same level 40 Hundo Blissey as the defender, let's have a look at the Draco Meteor attack damage from level 1 to 50 for a Hundo. First, we see that level makes a dramatic difference, with damage increasing substantially as level goes up. We also see that damage increases much more slowly at higher levels compared to lower levels, in line with the diminishing returns to CPM we looked at before. Next. We plot the same damage graph for a Zundo. We see that while the Zundo does noticeably less damage than the Hundo at every level, the difference is not as dramatic as you might expect. The damage at level 50 is 137 for the Zundo, versus 145 for the Hundo, a difference of 5.8%. As an aside, this difference of 5.8% is quite interesting, because it is dramatically less than the 20% damage bonus given to Shadow Pokémon. This means that a Zundo Shadow Pokémon actually does more damage than a Hundo non-Shadow Pokémon. In many cases, like raids, you almost exclusively care about damage, and not defense, so consider not transferring low IV Shadow Pokémon that are useful for raids. Let's look a little more closely at the effect of the attack IV. This graph shows how attack damage changes due to the attack IV for a level 50 Dragonite using Draco Meteor on a level 40 Hundo Blissey. The change is pretty small, so let's zoom the graph. Now we can see something rather interesting. The damage amounts for attack IVs 14 and 15 are actually identical. This isn't a calculation mistake, it's actually a result of the way that the floor function is used in the attack damage formula. 
What floor does is change a number to its nearest lower integer by throwing away everything after the decimal point. For example, the floor of 1.5 is 1, and the floor of 2.3 is 2. Because floor is throwing away some stuff after the decimal point, a small change in attack stat sometimes has no effect on the damage. The level 50 Dragonite with 14 attack IV has an effective attack stat of 232.76, while the level 50 Dragonite with 15 attack IV has an effective attack stat of 233.60. These are slightly different, but if we plug them both into the attack damage formula, we get the same result, 145. Now, it's important to note that while the difference of 1 IV doesn't make a difference here, it doesn't mean that it wouldn't in any circumstance. Since the attack damage formula takes into account move power, defender defense stat, and other multipliers, there could be scenarios where the 15 attack IV does do more damage than the 14 attack IV. If you'd like to know more about how small stat changes sometimes do or don't change results, read up on breakpoints and bulk points in Pokemon Go. By the way, attack damage isn't the only thing that matters. When evaluating moves, you also have to consider the move cooldown, since this affects the move's overall damage per second, and the move's generated energy, since this affects how often charge attacks can be used. For charge attacks, you have to consider energy cost. But these factors aren't affected by IVs or level, and this video is already far too long, so I'm not going to talk about it any further here. In any case, it's clear that the difference between 14 and 15 attack IV is small at best, and completely irrelevant in some situations. We've already seen how defense is used in the attack damage formula, but let's flip things around so that the level 40 Hundo Blissey is now attacking our Dragonite with Hyper Beam, and see how changes in level and defense IVs affect things. This graph shows how damage taken decreases as the Pokémon's level increases for a Hundo Dragonite. From this graph, it's easy to see why low-level Pokémon are so quickly defeated in battle. Due to their low effective defense stats, they end up taking massive damage. Once again, we see massively diminishing returns for higher levels as the level approaches 50. This is once again due to CPM going up very slowly at higher levels. Now, let's also plot the damage taken by a Zendo Dragonite at each level. As before, we see that the difference between the Zendo and Hundo is quite small. To see it better, let's zoom the graph and just show the damage taken between levels 8 and 50. Now, we can see a more clear separation between the Zendo and the Hundo. The level 50 Hundo takes 58 damage, while the level 50 Zendo takes 62, which is 6.9% more. Let's look a little more closely at the effect of defense IVs. This graph shows how damage taken changes due to the defense IV in the same scenario of the level 40 Hundo Blissey attacking our level 50 Dragonite with Hyper Beam. Again we see that the change due to IV is pretty small, so let's zoom the graph. We again see an interesting effect, where because of the floor function used in the attack damage formula, the damage taken doesn't change with every IV change. In particular, defense IVs 13, 14, and 15 all lead to the same amount of damage taken. This means that for this particular move matchup of Draco Meteor vs Hyper Beam, a Dragonite with only 14 attack and 13 defense IVs is exactly as good as a Hundo. Now, again, this may not be the case for all scenarios and matchups, but it does show just how small of a difference one or two IVs makes. Finally, let's look at how level and the stamina stat affect Pokémon HP. The HP formula is very simple. HP is calculated simply by rounding down the effective stamina stat. So, for example, a level 50 Hundo Dragonite, which has an effective stamina stat of 209 plus 15 times 0.84, which is 188.16, would have 188 HP after rounding down. The only exception is Pokémon in gyms for which the Gym Defender's HP is apparently doubled for some reason. This graph shows how a Hundo Dragonite's HP increases as its level increases. As before, we see diminishing returns as the level gets closer to 50, due to the CPM going up very slowly at higher levels. Now, let's also plot the HP of a Zundo Dragonite at each level. As before, we see that the difference between the Zundo and Hundo is quite small. At level 50, a Zundo Dragonite has 175 HP, while a Hundo Dragonite has 188 HP, an increase of 7.4%. Let's look a little more closely at the effect of Stamina IVs. This graph shows how HP changes due to the Stamina IV for a level 50 Dragonite. Again, we see that the change due to IV is pretty small, so let's zoom the graph. We again see the breakpoint effect, where due to the rounding down of the effective Stamina stat, some IV values result in the same HP. 
although in this case, 15 stamina is slightly better than 14 stamina. That said, the difference between a 15 stamina IV and a 14 stamina IV is exactly 1 HP at level 50. It's a minuscule difference. In Pokemon Go, CP, or combat power, is one of the most visible stats you have about Pokemon. But unlike the attack, defense, and stamina stats discussed earlier, CP is a somewhat arbitrary, meaningless number, and doesn't directly affect anything during battle. The most important thing that CP does is restrict which Pokemon can be used in Go Battle League, with Great League restricting Pokemon to a max of 1500 CP, and Ultra League restricting Pokemon to a max of 2500 CP. CP is calculated using this formula. For example, a level 50 Hundo Dragonite can be calculated to have a CP of 4287. Notably, CP is proportional to the attack stat, but it is only proportional to the square root of the defense and stamina stats. Square root grows slower than linear, so this means that a high attack stat makes the CP disproportionately higher than a high defense or stamina stat would. This is an odd choice, because attack is not actually a more important stat than defense, despite what its greater impact on CP would imply. In fact, attack and defense appear as equals in the attack damage formula, where a high defense stat cancels out a high attack stat and vice versa. Essentially, attack is overrated in the CP formula. This is the reason that for Great League and Ultra League, where CPs are restricted, it is generally optimal to use Pokemon with a low attack IV and high defense and stamina IVs. For example, on pvpoke.com, it shows that Claude Sire is the top Pokemon for Ultra League, and the best stats possible, respecting the maximum of 1500 CP, occur on a level 30.5 Claude Sire, with attack IV 0, defense IV 14, and stamina IV 13. On this graph, I've plotted Claude Sire's CP for both its Hundo and Great League Optimal IVs, as its level increases. We see that with the Great League Optimal IVs, we can achieve a significantly higher level before exceeding the 1500 CP limit. After all this analysis, I think it's reasonable to say that in most cases you shouldn't be too concerned about exact IVs for combat performance. While Hundos are the best, in many cases it doesn't matter if you're missing a few IVs here and there. Even Zundos, with zero IVs, perform within about 6% of Hundos, despite the appraisal screen making them look considerably worse. The only place that exact IVs really make a difference is at the most elite levels of competition in Go Battle League, or when micro-optimizing raid parties where every single point of damage, or HP, matters. This surprising unimportance is because, despite the high visibility of IVs in Pokemon Go, the vast majority of a Pokemon stats are hidden in the Pokemon species base stats, which are invisible in the game. Of course, Pokemon Go is not just about battling. It's also a collection game, and collecting Hundos is a big part of that. Just like shiny Pokemon, which have no practical benefit at all, Hundos provide a fun collection goal, and none of what I've said changes that. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Pokemon Go stats, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.